You know, now to a One Detroit special report. We're taking a closer look at air quality issues here in the Detroit area and the impact of emissions and in vehicles and in industry. There are also a host of health issues because of airborne chemicals like sulfur dioxide. And there's something called fugitive dust. This is an ongoing battle balancing the output of industry and the health of people who live around it. The city of Detroit has been looking at ways to address that problem. And this fall, after years of debate, the city council passed a new ordinance. Back in 2013, across the river in Canada, an environmental group called Windsor on Watch were watching big black piles grow along the Detroit shoreline. We first got wind of it when uh, a lady that lived in one of the apartment buildings on the riverfront saw this black dust on her balcony. But when we saw these piles, we knew exactly what that was on this woman's balcony. The Canadians had started to complain, but it took a really big gust of wind to make it an international incident. I noticed off to my side a black cloud coming down the river. So I phoned my camera that way, and I think you can hear me on the video. goes, is that the pet coke? It was like somebody took charcoal and just wiped out the skyline of the city of Detroit. It almost was like a ghost floating across the river. The wind shifted, and that cloud actually came down downtown Windsor here. Oh, my God. That video really started putting this issue on the map. In southwest Detroit, down near the Ambassador Bridge, piles of industrial materials are nothing new, but the black mounds were. It was petroleum coke, or pet coke, another concern for a part of town facing health issues because of air pollution. Growing up in Southwest, where I live and have grown up my whole life, you do get used to the industry. But at the same time, it, it doesn't, it's never felt right. It always feels wrong. Like, why is this allowable? And is this really the reality that we have to live in? Pet coke. It's a byproduct of processed tar sands oil that comes from oil refineries. It's shipped overseas where it's burned like coal. I could see how much dust is moving up the conveyor belts and dumping into the freighter. Detroiter Stephen Boyle documented the pet coke from the roof of a nearby apartment building. Meanwhile, Rashida Talib, then a state representative from Detroit, did her own investigation and gathered some samples. It took us independently fighting on our own without city or state help to get these tested to actually show like we're not crazy, this is toxic and we need to do something about it. The test found toxins, including vanadium, selenium, even arsenic. By summer of 2013, Mayor Dave Bing got involved and the piles were gone. The source of the pet coke is the Marathon Petroleum Refinery in the most southern part of the city of Detroit, an area called 48217. It's also called the most polluted zip code in Michigan. My husband's on a, a CPAP machine. Yeah, that his breathing is completely off, and the doctor said it's what he's, his environment, and what he's inhaling. It's what I use every day. Robert and Jacqueline Smith live a few blocks from the refinery where people have higher rates of asthma than the rest of the state. Here, some residents knew what pet coke was long before the piles appeared because they were worried how it could affect them. Well, back when they announced that and told us the new process and that they were going to start processing dirty uh, tar sand oil, which they call sour oil, uh, the question was asked, what is going to happen to the byproduct, which is pet coke? And they told us they were going to sell it. The trucks would actually pull up to that. They'd be filled up through the chute it's inside the building and they'd drive out and then they'd take off down the road to where they're going to dump off the pet coke. We asked way back then, how were you going to protect the community from any future tip dust and fumes? And that's when we were told they were going to tarp it, hose the trucks down before they came through the community. Now, Teresa Landrum is satisfied with Marathon's fugitive dust plan for pet coke. It's held in an enclosure, not like what happened on the river in 2013, which was not Marathon's problem. But with more bulk storage facilities around the city, there are a lot more piles of other stuff which can go airborne. So if dust is blowing off these piles onto the river, that's contamination. Rhonda Anderson of the Sierra Club is on Jefferson Avenue in Del Rey, another part of Southwest, just north of 48217. Looks like coming off a ship to me. 
And that, if that's the case, where is it coming from? And look at all this dust that's on the street from the trucks. That's not healthy. And I think I can taste it. All this led Detroit City Council member Raquel Castaneda Lopez to action. She started working on a fugitive dust ordinance when she first took office. It passed four years later in the fall of 2017. The Michigan Aggregates Association is one of many groups that opposed it. This is precedent setting. While there may be some localities that have permits on one of the issues was pet coke, that is one that certainly is out there, but on sand uh, and gravel for construction projects, this is by far the, the first one in the nation. It is unprecedented on that. The ordinance requires pet coke or coke-like materials kept in enclosures, but for other materials, no enclosure is required, but a fugitive dust plan needs to be in place along with air monitors. Those against the ordinance say most of those things are already required by other government agencies. As far as our daily operations, there really is not going to be that much of a difference. However, the, the paperwork and the administrative burden is going to be uh, more of a concern to us. Needham says he's still working with the city on details of the ordinance as it takes effect and hopes it won't hurt business, which has been good. The construction boom needs aggregates. For Castaneda Lopez, she's looked at other cities around the country and in Europe that found ways industry and people can coexist in a healthier environment. She wants Detroit to move in that direction. I think it's a first step in the city is kind of changing the trajectory from solely relying on heavy industry to support our local economy and really towards diversifying the local economy. Because if we want to attract families to the city, if we want to make this a thriving city uh, and people are coming and, and feeling sick or being impacted by the type of industry, it's just not going to work out. So where's the pet coke going now? Marathon says that's proprietary information, but those watching closely say they are not seeing it within Detroit city limits. One other thing, though, there are other cities like Ecorse and River Rouge that have bulk storage facilities, too, but the Fugitive Dust Ordinance only covers what's going on in the city limits. For all of our One Detroit Special Reports, just head to myweek.org.